Welcome to the lab. My name's Cory, and today I think we're gonna do another hobby hangout. Hobby time, whatever I've been calling it. I think I called it one of each. I just can't bring myself to do another big project this week. Not that I don't want, no, I just don't want to. I wanna do one sometime soon, but uh, I'm just not feeling up for it. After building this guy last week, uh, he took a lot out of me, and then I've been busy ever since, and I could just use some some downtime to visit with my friends and stuff. But there is one project I have, and that actually needs to be done. And that is this guy's base. By the way, still haven't figured out a name for him. Uh, I think I might just call him Trevor. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can come up with a cool monster name for him, or like an actual name. Cool. This guy needs to be based. His legs, I did not build correctly with armatures. They need to be glued down. They're still shifting. They can still bend a little bit because of how I made them. Next time when I make legs, I know to take two pieces of wire and twist them so that they have a more rigid form because this uh, aluminum wire structure is great. It, it provides a great, uh, you know, base for material for armatures, but when you're doing something thin like this, it doesn't, you don't want it to be so long, and I'm definitely worried about crushing this guy, especially under his own weight. So he needs something that he's going to sit on, and uh, it'll take the brunt of the damage. So, Trevor, you're going away for now. So here's the base and what I've done so far, and unless I was dumb and got rid of the footage, because I had a lot of footage after Monster Bash. I will be putting it up right now of what I did to this base so far. Uh, so I'll, I'll just catch you up to speed, basically. Um, I was going through my extra foam bits, and I took a couple, and I tried to chop them into a rock, and then like an interesting... I wanted to make it like a coral or something. It didn't work out that way. I'm not sure how people spread around... Uh, sculpt the mold thin thin like I failed on the rock it kind of doesn't even look like a rock much anymore and more of a log though we're gonna see if we can fix this with some coloring maybe maybe I'll just paint it to look like a, a normal rock I think it can still look like that it's just an odd shape for a rock but whatever my idea for this base uh, I'm gonna I am gonna try something new after I paint the the base tones and colors on it. Um, I am going to go ahead and try out some static grass. I have, I don't have an actual proper applicator. I may get one. Uh, but the guy at the train store I went to um, said, said that this worked just as well if you learned how to use it. I don't know how much I believe that. Oh, you even have some glue and stuff in here. What? This is cool. But, he convinced me because this was $17, and the actual proper applicator was like $130. So, I bought the $17 version. So sue me. Especially because I've never used it before. I'm sure maybe it'll work just as well as a $17 version will work. Um, but I think it, I think I get what I'm supposed to get do here. Apply the static. This is definitely a one project hit uh, to get you into it. I think maybe the seven millimeter. So I like the color of the four. Let's see what I got in here. We're planning ahead right now. I know nothing's going on at the moment, but we're planning ahead. I've got a drawer here filled with woodland scenic stuff. Ideally, this will re be replaced onto a shelf over here in the future. Don't know when I'm going to get around to that, but having these fill up an entire drawer uh, is a little bit obnoxious. I've got one for bushes. I saw these there. I couldn't help myself. I was like, tiny little bushes? Just a bunch of them? Yeah. Looks to be four millimeter. So this seven millimeter stuff is uh, longer than what the medium is. Oh, this is open already. I didn't open. 
Yeah. For sure longer. What? What? There is a seal. <laughs> it came off already. Excuse me. Yo, that might be useful. I feel like these are small enough to um, maybe even slip through with it closed. I'm going to keep that on there. I can punch that out anytime I want. Manufacturing defect, that is going to work to my advantage. All right, so seven millimeters out. This is in our arsenal today. I'll be okay with learning with me. Like I said, this is a hangout sesh. So you're in it the long run, which for me is going to be like a three hour session for you is probably going to be like 20 minutes, maybe 40. I don't know. The last hobby hangout I did, I talked for quite a bit more than I thought I'd be able to. Hopefully this microphone is in as, good as well. Still testing out where to place my new mic, how to talk into it. I'm turning away from it a lot, which I realized uh, during some of the last stuff I recorded is a bad idea. So I should turn my body with it. What am I looking for? Oh, not this drawer, in this drawer. These guys. Yeah, those those guys. So my idea, this uh, matches Trevor's color scheme for his main body, is uh, Trevor's a creature built out of magic. Like, he's concentrated magic. <clears throat> kind of like there's, like, ghostly ectoplasm. That's what his main body is made out of, is like magical ectoplasm. And so from it, he's been able to form different parts of his body. He's got the shell on his back, which kind of protect him on the front. And uh, I don't know, he grew fur because he saw other creatures had fur, maybe. And then he's got the these vine-like whipping legs, uh, which is why they're so wavy. <clears throat> I did that on purpose. Kind of look silly, but I also kind of love it. And they're, um, obviously they're just big old vines that whip around and have like trunk-like bark feet or something that plant into the ground as he's walking around. And they can go in a bunch of different directions. <clears throat> so my thought process is he's walking through some kind of land. He's obviously huge because the size comparison him to what's going to be wild grass He's a big dude, um, probably like some kind of fungal forest. So my thoughts are that this is going to look like a normal scene. I'm going to paint this boring, and then I'm going to put all this grass on it. And then I'm going to also make today uh, two, probably just two, because I don't want to overload the diorama. I want to make it look obvious for what it is, the story that's going here bunches of mushrooms or maybe like one big mushroom with a couple others on the end so i'm gonna break out the sculpey again and bake those and i'm gonna place those around a couple of patches of these they're gonna surround the mushrooms and the mushrooms are going to look funky colors and that's gonna be uh, i'm gonna try to make it look clear like that is where these vines had touched and rooted into the ground as he's walking forward and he's leaving behind traces of magic and it and it alters the vegetation where he's slapping around. Maybe, temp maybe temporarily, maybe permanently. But I want I want there to be a couple of spots of color on the base where he's moved. So, otherwise, this is just going to look normal. I'm going to like paint this rock as mostly gray, except for where he's touching. I don't know if that's smart. I definitely want to put some of these grass tufts around where he's touching here on the base. Obviously, I'm going to... What I'm going to do is paint the base. I don't know if I should do it brown or green. Corn. I don't know what's going to look better for the static grass. Brown is obviously underneath grass. It'll look like mud. How much will show through after the static grass? going to be a test. We're going to paint it brown, and then we're going to apply the static grass, and we're going to see what's going on to that, because otherwise this looks like big old muddy surfaces, right? So brown, then we're going to touch these off with gray, then we're going to apply the static. Uh, then we're going to mark 
we're gonna mark where Trevor's gonna stand and arrange his feet there. Then we're gonna mark a couple spots where we want the mushrooms. So then we're gonna build the mushrooms. Then we're going to apply the static grass everywhere, uh, except for those areas, or at least those areas will be thinner. Then we're gonna glue him and the mushrooms down, and then we apply these. And that's gonna be the project today. Probably a couple hours. Also, I uh, upgraded my flashlight. This is my UV flashlight from last time. This is my UV flashlight that I bought uh, last week. Boom. I mean, the difference is ridiculous. So while I was wondering why that screen took 15 minutes to set, now it won't. I'm definitely gonna have to play around with that UV resin a little more on some future project, but this will definitely help. So, all right, well, first things first, break out the browns and grays. Deep gray, I'm just gonna do my classic uh, rock paint job. Deep gray, gray, vanilla. Ground is going to be uh, chocolate or espresso. Let's see what we got going on here. What's open? A little sheet that I cut for my wet palette that I'm going to use for making mushroom brushes. I need a brush holder to sell. A bench. They haven't wrapped them up all the time. I was going to put them in here, but that's why I have this set aside. I think I might have to use this for something else because if I take these brushes and I go to put them in here, they disappear into it. Uh, you know, it's just I need them to stick. This needs to be shorter. It doesn't need to be like down. This mason jar too tall. I think this mason jar is just a, a bad choice. Taking up that space for no reason because I can't use it. All right, sculpting will come later. Get my sheet that I use for painting out of the closet. <laughs> this thing is looking like a piece of art. All the different things I've done. Also, miscast Trent. This mutation spell is life. It brings me so much joy. Your art. I don't know. I love how sloppy it is. But it's also really good. I don't know if you can see my face, but back over here. I love it. So, you see this video. Killing it. Killing it. You make anything else like this, I'm buying it. It's dumb. Don't do that. I'll go broke. Or do it and take all my money. One of the two. Water. <laughs> Be right back. Hey, I'm back. All right. Get to work. I don't know if it's smart to do this or if the sculpt mold is fine by itself. I really should play around. If <laughs> you hear my boy all the time, I'll be like, Come here. I'll leave the door cracked just for you. Uh, you know what? Let me bring you in a chair. Stop crying. I'm here. I know you want to hang out. Come on. I have to bring him a special chair so he can sit next to me. Got a blanket on it. Come here, you cry baby. You just wanted to be in here. Come on, I'm not going to close the door all the way. It's going to be cracked. Come chill with me. There we go. Come here. Say hi to the camera, Percival. Percival. Sir Percival. Hi, buddy. Oh, buddy. Hi. You can't, I can't hold you right now. I'm working. I'm sure all you guys can hear is my cat moving around. I'm sorry. Right over the microphone. Buddy. Oh. 
Oh, how am I supposed to work? I, I gotta put you down here. You can stay right here. I'm not going anywhere. Although I want my uh, cord back. Thank you. <laughs> You've officially met Sir Percival. The big old baby. All right. <clears throat> so yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna have to play around with Sculpt a little more. I feel like putting it on wood was a mistake. Definitely, obviously, warp the wood because it had to get wet. But also, it took a couple days to dry. I don't know if I should have started painting it then. Just curious. That's all. So for now, I'm gonna get it a little slapper dish mod page. Especially on these rocks. I should buy more brushes. These have become my all-purpose brushes, and they're still good. And I still keep keep care of them. I clean them after every project, especially if I use Mod Podge with one of them or some kind of glue. Uh, and they're still working great for what it is they are. Let me spread this thin, or else it'll never dry. Oh, it will dry. It'll just take an hour and. You know how that goes. I guess I could cut the feed there and let it dry, but I also, like I said, don't want to do this all day. Project I'm okay with taking a couple hours, but last one took me 30 hours and I, uh, in a 48 hour weekend. I can take out the 11 hours of sleeping. And it was also, uh, my little, my younger brother's not little. He became a teenager. Uh, so my younger brother's. Um, 13th birthday that weekend and I also had to stop for food and sit, you know, with my significant other I wanted to spend some time with Emily because uh, I didn't see her the rest of the week I was working a lot of overtime and doing other house chores and stuff and she was working overtime and she worked nights and I worked morning so the only time we see each other is in the evening Um, so the other seven hours were also super busy. And then last weekend, what did I do last weekend? Gosh. Last year, last weekend was Halloween. That's right. Last weekend was fun, but it was also very hectic. I had a friend, uh, well, my, my mother's birthday is the 27th. Anybody. Either 27th or 26th. Uh, so she had her birthday that Saturday. And then that night, uh, I had a friend have her 30th birthday. Birthday party, rather. So I went to that all night which is really good. I hadn't seen them in a while. Uh, but it was busy. There was a lot of other people there that I'd never met. And Sunday... Sunday... What did I even do Sunday? I think I slept in and spent some time with Emily that day because we hadn't had quality time on one day. If I remember correctly. And then it was the week, so of course I was busy again. Pretty much the whole week. Um, yeah, lots of, lots of work to do that week. Inadvertently, didn't work a bunch of overtime, simply because of um, how my schedule worked out and some other stuff I needed to do for work. Did work some. And then uh, Thursday was game day at my house. Had some new friends over. 
and a friend that hadn't been able to make it for a couple months. So it was actually the first day, game day at my house in a month, simply because we're adults. But yeah, I don't know what you expect from us. It's, it's, it's work just to get people together. Uh, so I had a friend offer for me today to come visit him at about 9-ish. Emily worked last night. She's got overtime tonight. So... I get to see her for about two to three hours. She wakes up at three. It is currently 11.30. And I finish this by three. Hopefully. Gives me about three and a half hours. We will see. Hopefully it doesn't take me three and a half hours to do all of this, right? And then, uh... Come on, Lid, you need to be right. Otherwise, it's not going to work at all. Then I'm going to go see him. Maybe a couple other friends in between. We'll see. I don't know how long this, the uh, static is going to take to dry, but it's the last step before gluing on the monster and the mushrooms. And I think um, I'll, I'll maybe just record that last bit tomorrow morning. I've been talking non-stop. I may cut some of this out. You probably don't want to hear about my work week or your hobby. But I'm also here to hang out with you. So, you know, you get together with friends. Do you really only talk about the paint areas in? No, you usually talk about how you're doing. At least I do. I'm the type, I'm the type of guy that kind of avoids small talk and likes to really get into the nitty-gritty of stuff. And you'd be like, you know, how are you? What have you been up to? Especially with my close friends. So, and if you're here, at least so far, <laughs> how small my channel is, i probably consider you a friend. <sighs> this is going to take a minute to dry. So, while this is drying, let's make some mushrooms. This is a perfect time um, to use some of my other time. Oh, now you come back. I was going to use your chair. Can I... Can I... Mm, buddy, I love you. All right. Let's head over here. Come out. Sculpey. And I immediately left my office. Just came in to yell at me. Why are you in here? How much scopey will I need? Not much. I'm assuming one sheet will be plenty. I'll put the rest of it away later. <sighs> We're gonna do this for now. Okay. How big are these mushrooms? I should probably get out some tools here. I don't know if I'll need these. Maybe some scissors? I don't think the bottoms need to be perfectly flat. Matter of fact, the best bet would have been to shape it against the base. I think we can get away with doing it. <clears throat> this is actually making a bunch of ridges on the underside, too. Which I'm not going to smooth out <clears throat> because that looks more mushroom like. Okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Every mushroom is perfect. Prove me wrong. You can't. They're mushroom. What a circle. I want a tiny circle. I want a tiny circle. That's fine, that's fine. That looks like a dude. These little dudes are going to be funky colors. Try building 
mushroom out of one piece now because I want a couple more attached to the bottom of this and I think they're gonna to be too small to appropriately patch uh, the, the top. So I'm gonna pull out and flattening. <coughs> rolled one uh, one piece into a ball and then I kind of rolled it into the stem and then I'm kind of pinching out what I'm going to use for the lid. I think I'm gonna put my fingers here and push it down. the top of the mushroom curve the edges we'll curve down some we can pull that out and then we'll take this and we'll stuffy it up pull it away from the top you want to stubby up the bottom boom little tiny mushroom stem that's growing I like it boom one mushroom down for the base really need to get that looked at my car has a loose sensor in the door so as the temperature changes and the door moves because it's metal it sometimes is like somebody's breaking in I'm like no you're just too sensitive stop being so sensitive it's like a paranoid sensor if I'm driving down the highway at night I had to turn off all the uh door opening activation lights in my car you know how you open your door all your lights come on i had to turn all that off because if i rest my arm on my driver's side door my door thinks that the door is open or my car thinks that the door is open so all the lights in my car go on and you're you're driving 11 o'clock at night middle of the rain lights in your car go on not exactly conductive to being able to see the road so i to turn all that off Little mushroom dude. I like that. Mushrooms aren't like perfectly straight, you know? A little funky. I'm okay with that. Maybe I'll just do the two. I thought I was gonna make more. I don't think so. I think I don't want too much going on on this base. I want it just to be like, hey, Wherever he's stepping, something weird's happening. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with these little dudes. Hey, stand up on me. This is, this is how you work up. Let me roll this out. And, uh, put away the sculpey, I guess. And start my oven. Oops. Yeah, perfect. Those little dudes. What is that, 275 or 15? Something like that. They should probably be in there for a little longer than 15. 275, 15. <gasps> Let me go punch that in. Hey, buddy. I'm gonna take these guys and go put them in the pan anyways. picked up. Always pick up as you go if you know you're completely done with something. I don't have much room in this office. So it's something that I stick to. My hobby bench. Um, a lot of people are like, you're not crafting anything. Your hobby bench is clean. But, uh, no, I, unless my hobby bench is clean, I can't craft anything. So the opposite is true. <laughs> I can't, I can't deal with a, a busy mess, or a, a work mess. Not that the rest of my house is, is clean, mind you, but messes where you work just never work, work. you know? At least for me. My bedroom can be messy as heck. I'll know where everything is, but make a mess on my workspace. No, I need it. I need it to be productive. So, plenty of super sculpey to go around. How am I going to paint those mushrooms? Probably in fluorescent color. 
<clears throat> That's probably how. Probably gonna have to be prime. But tiny enough. I don't know if I'm gonna use my airbrush. Look at this. It's almost done drying. Mod Podge is so good. <laughs> Give us time to make those little dudes. I think we're breaking out the heat gun. Oh, Percival, you're not gonna like this. It's loud. It goes whoosh. Where did I put my heat gun? I moved things around recently and had to reorganize my drawers. I really need to reorganize, reorganize them and just get them nice and tidy. Well, I haven't had a chance yet. So. We are going ahead of. A friend of mine go live doing art. I'll have to watch you later, Celeste. <clears throat> I think the super sculpting may have helped this dry. Because it wants the moisture. But this will prevent it from getting too much else. I just need this in a position that I can put a brush to it without the Mod Podge going everywhere. Obviously, I missed the underside of this rock. Whatever. It's gonna get painted. Nobody will notice. It's on the back of the underside. I think I'm in a position now. Gonna check in my oven real quick. I don't think it's there yet, but just in case it happened while I was. It did get there. Set a timer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes starting now. There we go. I think 15 minutes should be enough. Alright. Brush. Get off a little. Craft paint! This stuff doesn't really separate. I still shake it just in case. Probably separates a little. Where does the mud add and the rock start? So I start with the rock. And then put the mud over it. I think I do that. I think I start with the rocks. The reason I'm starting with the rocks is because. It looks like the mud, or they've, they've been pushed into the mud. Deep gray, deep gray, yes. There's my old deep gray. Last time I was at Michael's, I loaded up. Probably good enough. I'm not painting a ton of rock. I'll paint this down and then I can paint over it again with the brown. And that'll look like, uh, you know, it's been pushed into the mud. And if any of the rock shows through, it looks like the mud is over the rock versus the other way around. I'm not worried about being too precise right now. It's going to be a little floppy. Boom. And then I can paint over that with the mud to clean it up. And then it's going to be covered in grass anyway, so... And the same is going to go for this whole thing. And it's going to be painted. And this will be gray. I was going to try to make it look like coral or something, but it looks more like rock than anything else. So that's what we're going with. Gosh, acrylics are so great. Look, they're already dry. Oh, that black peek through is fine. Yep, it's far way more deep gray than I needed. Brown. This. Cool. Always pour more. Can't put it back in the bottle. I mean, probably could, but I'm not going to because it's a 70 cent bottle of paint. So I'm 
not putting it back in the bottle. But no sense of wasting it. You don't have to. Is this gonna be a good look? Can't tell you. Won't know until it's done. Let's hope that the aesthetic grasps looks appropriate. I'm just gonna get the center bit. I'm gonna get the big pieces and then I'll clean up around the rock and the edge of the uh, area. Turns out, I need more brown. That's okay. I'll get more. Boom. I need some more brown. Weird how it works, right? <sighs> I don't know if this is the right way to go about this. I'm thinking I might have had a better uh, look if I painted it green. But this is a good learning experience, and I don't feel like doing the uh, tests before the product. Sometimes it's not worth it. Um, you know, I don't. I don't want to paint spoons right now. You know what I mean? I don't. I, I'm just going to do it on the product. I'm just going to do it on the finished thing, and it will stand, you know, wherever I put this thing as my learning experience. I can look at it, know what fun I had completing the process, and if it's not perfect, that's okay. It will be a project that is done, which is not, which to me is more important than having every project look perfect. Don't be afraid of messing up. You'll learn, and then you'll do better on the next project. You, you know, you have all these, and at least I know I do, ideas for things that you want to accomplish and complete. You know, I've got a couple of busts on my shelf behind me that I want to get to. Um, and I've been wanting to practice uh, painting on some more hero models for um, Warhammer before I get to those busts, just so that I can narrow up, uh, you know, shore up my skills. I'm not perfect, and I don't want to be perfect to paint those busts. I want them to be learning experiences too, but I feel like before I paint something so large um, and so detailed, I want to be able to hit those details in the appropriate way, even if it's not a perfect way. I want to uh, know what I'm missing or getting into. Does that make sense? So something like that, I don't mind waiting on, just because that's how I want to approach that. But for other things, like I was saying, the Warhammer models, I've got so many of those things. There's so many of them. There's so many tiny D&D. &D. Um, I, don't, I don't mind starting there, because I want to get them done. But I also... They're smaller. They take less time. I can put them on the shelf, and most of the time they're still going to look good from five feet away, which is where you're going to be standing. Just do it, get done with it, move on to the next one. You know, people get so wrapped up and uh, trying to make every single mini look perfect. And I know I still do that sometimes because unless you're working for perfection, you're not going to improve your skills. Paying attention to what you're doing, that kind of a thing is always important in any skill. If you're just passively using the skill, you're not going to improve as good at it. And as a matter of fact, you could probably start some bad habits by just passively using your skill. Um, if you start, if you accidentally uh, try something and it is a bad way to do something, and then you just do it that way a bunch of times, because you're not paying attention, you're not trying to learn, you're trying to better yourself, it can stick that way. Maybe a little sloppy on the edge here, because I'm actually going to paint this whole rim black. There we go. Nice and messy brown. I don't know if what I'm saying makes sense. Just do it. Just do your hobby. 
That's the most important part. Completing something, moving on to the next piece. Maybe you don't need to always need to try your best. There's there's a time and what I'm trying to say is there's a time and a place to try your best. But what's important is just to do. If you don't do, it never gets done. And then you never get on to the rest of the stuff. You only have so much time in your life. Do you want to really sit there and stare at all the things you want to do, or do you want to do them? You know, you'll get better as you go. Next year, there's going to be cooler minis. You're going to have better ideas. You're going to be playing a different game. I've still only played two test game games of Frostgrave. Two. I don't even know how to play Sigmar yet. I got the rulebook. I haven't read it yet, because why? I don't have an army yet. I got a pack of wolves and one Radicar painted for my Warhammer stuff. I'm not complaining about that. I think I've been going at a, a good enough pace. If I've put more time into my hobby, I, really, I, I don't have the time to put more time into my hobby and still be happy. I work a full job. I am an extrovert, so I enjoy seeing my friends. I need that at least once, maybe twice a week. Family, I have a very big family. They want to see me. And of course, there's Emily, which is included on both of those previous things. But we also need our own personal time. One on one, go on a date. And we haven't done that in a couple of months. I'm excited for next weekend. I'm going to a, a small convention, play a bunch of board games. That's going to be good. That's going to be a good escape. But this weekend, I want to go spend some personal time with a buddy of mine. So I'm going to. I should label these drawers. I should really just tear these apart sometime. Put in little inserts and stuff, and then label the drawers what's in them. Looks like I missed a looks like I missed a spot here. There's like a little bubble hole underneath. Nobody's ever gonna see it. I'm not gonna touch it up. Alright. <laughs> First dry brushing. Let's go. Have another piece of this. Alexa! Stop. Just in time. Hurry up and wait. Actually, it's not hurry up and wait. I've been using my in-between times appropriately. Isn't that right, Principal? Be right back. <sighs> there. Those guys are going to sit and cool for a little bit. Now we're going to start on our dry brushing. I think this guy is pretty much done. You know how to do this. It's a gray. You put it on your fluffy brush. You wipe most of it off. on all the bristles, basically. Good enough. I'm not trying to be perfect here. Just want to get in there. Add some texture. I'll bring out the texture with it. Look at that. Immediately. It's like, hey, I'm a different piece. You didn't know what I was before. Now you do. Vanilla. <laughs> Don't need much of that. Boop. Make sure that is the appropriate color. Even lighter. I was wrong. I'm not done with the other brush. This needs washes. <clears throat> Get a good uh, couple of washes here. Homemade. We're gonna mix up. 
clearly brown, one's clearly more of a black. Guess what we're gonna use on where? We can do the black first, and then the brown one. here. Blue one. I think I'm going to add to that. Oh, that's too much. I had a blockage. Oops. I guess this rock is going to get some blue on it. Huh. Not bad. Uh, maybe a bit of green. <laughs> no bucket. Good. We'll do a little dab here and here. Having a bit of color on your stones. Random colors. Honestly, really brings them a little bit out. Not being just normal. Gives them a look of, oh yeah. Maybe he's got like sediments and stuff in him. as colorful as this piece is, I wanted some extra color. I don't do this with my castle walls, or my brickwork, that kind of a thing, or small stones, but something like this, I think deserves to have that little bit of extra color. And of course, we gotta wait for this to dry. Or, I think these have all settled enough. Maybe done, oh, no, no, brown wash. Brown wash is next. Almost forgot the brown wash. This is just as important for anything that is peeking through to the ground. You want there to be texture on the ground as well. Not too worried about dry brushing a better brown on top um, because it's going to be covered in, you know, uh, grass. But be good to. If there's anything peeking through, see some shadow, or where it looks like it's deeper, you know, brings out, I don't know, just makes it look more like mud. Hard to explain. I did it with all of my, uh, mounds of spikes there, and pale corpses and stuff that I did for my vampire terrain. And I love how it looks, so I'm using it here. Mud is mud, right? There we go. This already looks a hell of a lot better than it did, right? Really like putting blues and greens on huh? it. Looks good. Mix it in with a black wash. Excellent. <clears throat> Done. Done. Need one more white dry brushing. This hasn't dried yet. Perfect. I think we're in a good enough spot for the dry brushing. Let's get that done. And then we can worry about the rest. I think the rest of it will dry off in the next couple minutes anyways. <clears throat> and if not, I don't think it really is going to matter too much. Another dab of this uh, vanilla. And get it all up on there. And uh, brush most of it off. But most of it, most of it, right? I, my girlfriend doesn't like how tall this bench is because when you sit at it, it's up to my chest. But I, I like this. Then I'm almost at eye level. I don't have to crouch down. It's the, you know what I mean? Oh, geez, I, I don't know. It feels good. I can sit up and it's also high enough that I can stand up. Personally, I think it's perfect for me, but is bad for your posture. Maybe she's right. I don't know.
I like it. I think it feels good. So. Just a light dry brushing. I want to bring back out these edges. I say light and I like two shots of vodka on the back of this thing. And that makes it look like stone again. Hey! Look at that. All those layers of colors and shades. And quick techniques. Stone is some of the most fun thing to paint, honestly. Just because of how good it can look when it's done. Bam. And that's it for painting. This brush can be put away. I'm gonna leave it out to dry. And you'll see what I'm talking about here about the legs. They're still warping on me. I think. This guy's supposed to go here. I'm not going to be too worried about it as long as it's in place. <clears throat> How are we going to mark these? Well, I got some extra marks in here. Maybe I use something else to mark them. Got these metallic sharpies that I bought for either signing or. Yeah, look at that. Yes, I like this better. Clearly see where that's supposed to be. Metallic markies, markies? markers for the win. Boom, you can see clearly our plan on placing things. Obviously this foot rests here, that's why I carved it the way it did. Or shaped it rather, not carved it. So, I guess we're on to flying the static grass. We're going smoothly smoothly. Knock on wood. I'm going to do this in a way that it's not going to get all over everything, huh? Let's... Way to do it right there. Oh, this stuff. All right, it is totally different. Um, yeah, I'll just do it. This is a piece of cardboard. If I have to lose this piece of cardboard, whatever. Interesting. All right. <clears throat> See how it works, huh? So we're gonna take this stuff and apply it. And it like this. A little more. How thick? Not even how related. Okay. Let's just shake it. Yeah, that's starting to look real cool. Okay. I'm into this whole static grass thing. Oh, I love this. Hell yeah. Oh, well, that looks, that looks so good. Yes, th this is awesome. I love this. You know what we can do with this? We can save it all. We can save it all. I love it. You, not you. You're a mod bunch. You don't belong in this glorious batch of grass. Open this bad boy up. Oop! Oh, bit much. I didn't mean for it to kind of all come out like that. 
Damn, that looks cool. That looks really cool. Save the foliage. Alright. Well, I think that does it for me for today. Because I have to let this dry. And then after it's dried, I will glue some of these grass tufts onto here. And I can do that tomorrow morning. I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, it's been two hours of this. I'm sure I'm going to have to cut it down into something. So yeah, I'll come back tomorrow and I'll finish it up. And then I will... I'll show you the final result. The next day, I'm not sure how long this took to dry. I don't think it took all evening to dry. That's for sure. Um, but I made use of my time. and got some other stuff that I wanted to do this weekend done. I don't know if I could bother with the whole comb thing. I don't think I can use this to get them to stand up any more than they already are. I think this just is going to... You use this to remove the, I think. I think it looks pretty heckin' good. Um, definitely can tell it was shaken, not stirred. Um, <laughs> not, not out of one of the, uh, other, what do you want to call it? Um, the static grass, static grass applicator. There we go. Definitely didn't come out of one of the, those things where you got the wire to make them all stand up. Because if you're looking at it top down, some of it kind of looks matted. From the side, it looks pretty fine. So, leave it as is. I think it looks pretty great. I uh, really, I really do like how it looks. Uh, it's better than not having the static, static grass on there. Alright, so the next thing <coughs> we're gonna do is clean up these mushrooms, I guess. And yeah, I know I use a plastic cup as my water dish for my paintbrushes. <coughs> but guess what? It works. And I'm not worried about ruining it. That's the plastic cup. I used my last plastic cup for about a year before I ditched that one, so you know, it worked. Maybe this is a mistake, but maybe that's enough. Hopefully that's enough. We will see. I know it's the airbrush primer, but I have brushed on the black one before. And you know what? It worked just fine. Works just like thin down paint, so. Yeah, the airbrush may make it uh, catch better. Or what have you. But I don't feel like breaking out the entire airbrush just for this job. Just going over, trying to give it an even coat as much as I can. And, uh, yeah. I don't know. Well, just painting it. So how was your day? Well, I kind of left you off yesterday. You're not going to notice in the video, but I took off for a while. Hopefully you're having a good, good Tuesday or whenever it is you finally catch this video. Now we're in the future. Hopefully you're able to take some time for yourself as well. It's very really important. You need to be able to keep yourself mentally sound, you know? Take, take time for you. Stop thinking about work and, you know, as long as you're caught up on your responsibilities at home as much as possible, you know, nothing's pressing. And you deserve a little time. And even then, sometimes you just gotta 
make priorities. If nothing's an emergency, maybe, maybe for you, like me, my recharge time is visiting with people. Uh, yeah, we could do that. Relieve some of that stress. Important. One thing I will do with the airbrush, though, besides making a lot of noise real quick. You know what? No, uh, I'll be quicker with this. I'll be quicker. Honestly, less loud because of the uh, compressor. I'm breaking out that heat gun again. Most have used this heat gun in a long time. Whoop. I think the primer got a little bit underneath the mushroom. Back down, guys. Come on. Don't move on me. Damn it. <sighs> Never easy as you want it to be, right? You know what I can do? Because I have some now. Here's a cheap sticky deck. There it is. Oh, give me this. Boom. Done. Get some silly putty, guys. It's cheap. Literally a dollar from the dollar store. One of the most useful tools that I've got obtained recently, honestly. Just a little thing of silly putty. Use it to mask with. Use it to stick thing to things to paint handles. Personally, the paint handle thing, I really enjoy the 3M, but when you're in the middle of something like this, and then the 3M fails because you didn't replace it because you thought it would be fine, and it's a little extra covered in dust than you thought. That's really, really, really helps. I think it was called, this one wasn't even Silly Buddy brand because that's expensive, or more expensive. This was just color grabbing putty or something like that. Even an egg. There's a bunch of it in there. Gonna be using it for a while, I think. And it was literally a dollar. So, worth it. Careful with the heat gun, it is hot, so the silly putty is probably melting on me. Which is probably not good. I didn't think about that. Didn't consider that at all. Uh, it's definitely stickier than it was. Oop. Oh, my bad. Let's make sure it returns back home to its or originating mass. Don't punch it off of the sticky pack. You know, don't be like me. Don't be that guy. Try not to get it all. By trying not to get it all over my hands, I've succeeded in getting it all over my hands. Instead of just my finger. Why am I afraid of paint? I don't know. Now it's literally all over the place. Okay, mushroom guy. I've had enough of you. Okay. What color are we gonna go for? I think the stems can be orange on, the, on, on these two things. I'm not even gonna give these guys a wash or anything. I'm just gonna paint them with these colors. Look at that. Good. These fluorescent colors are so good. And they're UV reactive. Golden. Guys, go get golden paint. Go get the golden fluorescent line. Uh, it doesn't specifically have that they're four airbrushes, but they're high flow acrylic. So they're definitely watered down. These are. These are definitely built for an airbrush, but they paint just fine, and they're so good. They're so good. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. Just putting paint on. Not much to say about this process. Pretty simple one. Get a brush that can fit into the areas that you need to paint, and put it on there. I'm not trying to make this guy look super special supposed to be like a mutated magic mushroom that grew in the space of, I don't know, 5-10 minutes over how long it takes for Trevor to walk around. So, 
thickly layering on the paint because I don't care. Plus having some of the white peek through uh, might make it look more interesting, like not one solid thing that was painted, it might look like, you know, it's for that mushroom. <clears throat> That's good for me. So we make the tops blue, so we make them yellow. I think I make them blue. I definitely don't need as much uh, paint poured into this thing. Yeah, there we go. That'll be funny. Thank y'all. Thank you for your sacrifice. Lost a lot of orange today. Get some yellow on this for sure. I made some polka dots on the top to make them stand out. Just this one, I think. Oh. I even let this be well mixed. I don't know. Ooh. Got highlighter fluid all over my hands. That's basically what this is. <laughs> oh no, I got paint on my fingers. Oh. If I was painting a big mini, I would try to get, or like a, a detailed mini, I would try to not get paint on my fingers, obviously. Uh, because I don't want to rub it off anywhere, but here I don't find too much. Trying to get in between all these uh, polka dots that I made with this brush. I don't care about being super, super precise, but I don't want to ruin the uh, polka dot. You know, the shape. And of course, I'm doing that as I go anyway. Move some of this blue here. There we go. I think that'll be good enough. I think that's good enough. What I say goes. My dang project. Alright. So, only like two, three steps left in this whole thing. No longer need this. I'm not repainting anything. You don't need anything to really dry faster. Clear my workspace some. Here. Primer's done. Painting's done. Brushes. Done. They're just gonna go back in. I'll clean up the palette and the water cup. Eventually! Oh, painting's not done. So I might have to break out that uh, heat gun again. There's one more piece of painting that I need to do. Before I start attaching stuff. Gotta clean that base, baby. We're gonna just start with the bottom first, because I may move on to a different brush for this. So just do that. Your brush down. Get some paint. Get it on there. I'm brushing opposite of the grains. Make sure it gets. I don't know. I'm just kind of mixing it up. No real rhyme or reason here. I'm gonna try to sound sound like. Oh, this is the way you should do it. But I honestly just just layer on the black paint. Get it black. Nobody cares. Okay. So my camera ran out of space. So I had to quickly uh, take everything that I recorded so far off. But you didn't really miss much anything besides me finishing basing. Painted the whole uh, piece of wood, or not basing, but painting the rim of the base, cleaning it up. Painted all of the wood black. You know, it's gonna go sit on a shelf somewhere. Want it to look nice. 
So that's where we're leaving that now. Now I just need to attach these mushrooms. And then the uh, grass tuft. And then we're good. I think. Oh, and, and, and obviously the monster. So we're going to break out the super glue. And super glue set. And make a mess. That's all. Excuse me. I also took the opportunity to clean up all of my paint supplies since I had the time. So. All right. Where do I start with this? Do I clean this area off? How is this gonna work? Oh, there's a double dude back here. Make it look perfect like that. the element. Do that. Take this. Come on. We're going to put some of this down here. And we're going to arrange it how I want it. Like this. And push it. Boom. Mushroom one. Mushroom two. Oh, I just got kind of leaning. Let's make some room. Kind of leaning. That's perfect. I'm going to do the same thing. Over his bottom here with the box super glue. Then I don't think I really need this anymore. We're gonna close that up, break out some of these guys. These weird puffs, I love these. I'm really hoping uh, my local game store can get some gamers grass in. I know they were in talks with them, but I don't know if that ever actually went anywhere. If they were able to do anything with it. But this stuff is so good. I'm gonna get this guy in here. And I'm gonna it down. Yeah. Early March. Where, uh, this monster has walked and sunk its roots into the ground at some point. Viney magic legs. Love it. Loving everything about this. All right, we're gonna take this one. Appropriate. I put down was way too close to the mushroom. So we're gonna put another layer out here. Whoa. Whoa. What are you doing? 
Dory Malong. I'll stay there. Please do not move from this spot. Whoops. Uh, let's try that again. This time with a little more. We're gonna go here. And you're gonna stay there. I think that's perfect. Ah, uh, wait, I don't wanna put this away yet. But we do need to put these away. put this guy on and hold this up so you can see it um, hopefully I can get a good little shot I'll take a another glory shot once this guy's on the you know epic reveal or whatever you want to call it this is a reveal really it's not really epic but um, of this once the guy's on it because I'm also going to put oh I do need those I'm also gonna put that stuff around his feet so the story is clear that, like, where he's stepping, this stuff is happening. So I need more. I need to get him up in here, too. So, do that. This. I'm gonna take this. Put this all over the base here. I'm gonna attach these feet one at a time, but I want to make sure the base is prepped for them to be attached. This stuff will go away pretty fast. I think that's good. Where do we start? <laughs> Front foot. I'm gonna rip that off, I think. Yep. And put a whole code in, in here for this to connect to. There! Going nowhere now. Perfect. Almost done. Let's put some stuff near his feet. A few patches so that it's clear, like where he's stepping. This is happening. That those mushrooms don't look out of place. I'll tie it together with this grass. Wherever he can sink into the earth, right? Bam! I think he's done. So, probably here, where I would say, hey, I'm gonna cut to a reveal. And I might probably just do it while I'm talking, to overlap it. Let me show you what he looks like. Also lift it up here so you can see. I think that's, I think that's what I wanted to do with this thing. extra grass from pushing this thing around coming off okay but yeah 
Okay. Well, there you go. The base is done. It finally has a home. Or it's not going to uh, break apart on me. I can set up somewhere and be happy with him being sturdy. Or at least as sturdy as he's going to get. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really enjoy doing these ones too. They just feel... I mean, they just feel like hanging out with a friend, you know? And doing some hobbying. It doesn't necessarily have to be some huge epic project. I got something important that I needed to do done. And I was able to save some time and uh, have some fun this weekend. And I, I much needed that, so I appreciate you guys letting me do that. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. And just like I did with all of this static grass, don't forget to experiment with your hobby. Thank you.